Hi everybody, thanks so much for joining us today. My name is Renee from the Memorial Foundation and I'm back for our health tip series. I'm here in the Healthy Eats classroom. You can see the, the sign behind me and I'm here with uh, Inika and Elena and we're gonna do some recipes. The theme this month is plants to protect your heart. A little fun spin on the Valentine's Day weekend we have coming up and also staying true to our, our plants theme um, with, with these, these folks here. And I want to give a shout out to our health tips sponsor for 2021. Thank you so much to Yakima Federal Savings and Loan for sponsoring this series. We're really grateful to you and uh, the Memorial Foundation works really hard to advance health care in Yakima by raising funds for four initiative areas and uh, living and sustaining a healthy community is one of those areas. So if you're interested in learning more about the, uh, the Memorial Foundation, please go to our website memfound.org and I'll put that in the comments when we're done with the video. I'll also put in the comments a um, uh, the recipes that we have. If you want to look at the recipes right now through the, the session, you can jump over to our event page um, and those recipes are posted there. Okay, so I'm going to flip the camera here and uh, introduce you to our hosts for today. Hi everyone, my name is Elena and I am the owner and instructor at Healthy Eats Classroom and I also do a lot of other things in the community um, and I'm very excited to share a couple of fun recipes with you today. And I'm Enika Ojanen. I'm a registered dietitian and diabetes educator with Memorial. And I'm so glad that I hope that you are joining us today. And I hope that you can continue to join us monthly. So as uh, we were saying that this is our plants to protect our hearts. So not only is it Valentine's coming up, so we definitely had to make sure we included chocolate for today, um, but it also is National Heart Month. And so that was the nutrition recommendations that we'll be talking about today. And then also incorporating those into what it looks like in terms of food and eating and also most importantly delicious foods <laughs> so one of the reasons why we're focusing on those plants is eating whole foods primarily plant-based is the only pattern of eating that has actually been shown to reverse heart disease and specifically it's the atherosclerosis which would be the plaques that build up in those arteries we've had more than one research study we have dr. Esselstein dr. Ornish that have done studies that actually have shown the reversal. And so it's pretty astonishing that we can actually do that through foods. And so we're gonna show you how and also how delicious it can be. Um, as we also see the more, as we can incorporate more plants into our eating, we can see a 30 to 40% reduction in our risk for cardiovascular disease as well. And we'll explain what plants to incorporate and also ideas that will taste good for you. Uh, we're going to start off with the Mexican kale and black bean salad and this is a really fun one um, and if you are a lot of times I have a lot of people that are really hesitant about kale we really want to incorporate leafy greens into our eating um, on a preferably daily basis but I encourage you if you don't eat any currently is just to work at getting them in and this type of kale that we're including I already chopped it up um, but if you look at the leaf on here, it's called Lacinato kale. It sometimes is also sold as dinosaur kale, but it's not as crinkly um, as just the standard kale that you, that you often find. So I often, I get this at Fred Meyer. At Fred Meyer, I've seen it green, I've seen it purple, uh, the color doesn't really matter. But why I like to use Lacinato kale, especially if you're not used to eating kale, it's a little bit more tender and not quite as bitter. The other way that we're going to make this more tender and less bitter is we get to massage the kale. So yes, we get to play with our hands. We don't need gloves at home. But what you do to massage the kale, you need an acid and salt. So our acid today is gonna to be some lemon juice. And we'll just pour that in there. And then your recipe calls for about a half a teaspoon of salt, which we'll just, there we go. And this is really where the only, except for some of the, I might add a little bit more later. We get a little bit of sodium from the salsa, but most of it's, see, and I send it flying, but that's okay. But we're just gonna massage this in and ideally massage it for a few minutes and then let it sit. Um, I am going to probably just add the rest of the ingredients instead of let it sit, but letting it sit 
what you will notice is that as initially the kale was to the top of this bowl and as we massage it and then if you let it sit at least five to ten minutes it's going to shrink probably closer to this portion about half almost half the size and that means it's getting nice and tender and so it's a fun one this is a great one to also incorporate your kids you know if you can incorporate kids in the cooking that they're also more likely to taste something and so this is again we're just massaging our kale I think that looks good for right now. It's already, again, reduced some of the volume. Ideally, let it sit, but what we're gonna do is just add the other ingredients. So one of the benefits of eating more plants um, for cardiovascular disease is fiber. So this is just a can of black beans. You can also, this happens to be a low sodium one. If you rinse your beans or other canned vegetables for at least 10 seconds under running water, that removes about 40% of the sodium, or you could purchase the no salt added. And on, if we look on the back of here, we want to work at getting the fiber in there. So a half a cup of these black beans has four grams of dietary fiber. The average American only gets 14 grams of fiber in a day. And I wish if you were right in here with a class, I'd be asking you these questions of how much should we aim for? And so that would be at least 25 to 35 grams. And if people are eating only plants, it's often 40 or above. So we really want to work at incorporating more fiber. So we're going to add that can of black beans. Again, these have been drained and rinsed, adding a lot of fiber. You can either do canned corn or the frozen corn. This has been frozen and then um, defrosted, so it's, we're not eating it frozen. That'd be a little chilly. And then a little bit of red onions. So that little bit of red, so a lot of it's the flavor profile that we're looking for with this, but that little bit of red and add some anthocyanins to, to this recipe. So we'll add some red onions. Try to finely mince those, uh, especially if onions, sometimes they can be a little strong. If you don't care for them, you can always leave them out. And then I really like to use chunky salsa. Um, and I often, it's called for a half cup. I honestly often put more than a half cup. The fun thing about this is you can do whatever heat level you would like. And so I'm a spice whisk, so I still choose mild, um, but you can do medium or hot, whatever you would like to do. You can even make your own salsa. I did last night, but I'm devouring it all, so I'm not sharing it today. And what we're just gonna do is we're gonna mix this all together. I forgot to grab a spoon. Okay, I'm gonna well, grab a spoon. <laughs> Thank you, Elena. We're gonna mix this without trying to send it flying. <laughs> and at the end, what we're going to do is also add a few pepitas. So it's actually, we don't need as much added fats um, from our foods as we think. Even honestly, if we look at other standards like the World Health Organization versus like the USDA with recommendations, it's, it is lower. Now fat, there can be a lot of health benefits to it. And when we look at heart healthy fats, you might be most familiar with our heart healthy fats like nuts and seeds. And something with nuts and seeds is if it's more in that whole food form versus changing it just into an oil. And so what we have here, we have some raw pepitas that we're gonna add and just adds a nice little crunch. I like to plate this first and then add the pepitas to the top. Something that's fun about pepitas, and if you aren't familiar with pepitas, they are the inside of the pumpkin seed. So the shell has been removed, but they're an awesome source of iron. So if you're eating more plants and you're struggling with your iron levels, um, pepitas can be something that you could incorporate that in. Honestly, when I went plant-based, my iron levels improved. So. So we're just gonna put a little bit on this on the plate. We'll make it look a little prettier as we go along. I actually might add a touch of salsa to the top just cause I could get some red color to that. Ooh, a few red bell mm. peppers. Yum. There we're gonna add some pepitas. And then lastly, I actually take my gloves off even though I'm still touching food, but what I wanted to show you you could do like blue blue corn chips work really nicely with this, but I like to try to do something that's baked. And I'm sorry, this is kind of loud as I'm opening it up. Let me turn this around so you can see it. These aren't chips. However, they're tostadas that have been baked. And they're actually almost easier to find than baked tortilla chips. 
So you could use it as a tostado, but you could easily break that up into a chip. And you always wanna add that to the very end so it doesn't get soggy. And if I were to flip this around, the serving size is three tostadas, which is I think is pretty impressive. And there's only one and a half grams of fat. If this was regular chips that have been fried, there'd be 10 grams of fat in there. Um, fried chips doesn't have much of this. This is a saturated fat that's, that's gonna increase cholesterol levels and is not healthy for our heart, same with the trans fat. But that is awesome to only have one and a half grams of total fat from a baked chip. So I'm gonna, gonna let Elena show you the Southwestern egg rolls as I put some chips on top of this. Pretty. It looks good. Mm -hmm. And I loved um, that Enika picked both of these recipes out and a lot of the ingredients overlap. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna see that when I put this recipe together. So if you're going grocery shopping or you're making a meal plan for the week, these are two great recipes that you can add to a meal plan and be able to use up some of those ingredients that are in your fridge, which yes. is really, really great. So we're gonna do a little spin on an egg roll. Obviously egg rolls are more of the Chinese culture, but we're gonna put a little southwestern -y spin on them. These are really, really good. We've taught this recipe before in our Instant Pot Air Fryer class, and um, it's a delicious recipe, super easy to make. I have a can of black beans, um, some corn, some perfectly diced up red bell pepper. I have about three tablespoons of a mayonnaise, and you can use whatever mayonnaise that you like. We're using a just mayonnaise, which is an egg-free variety, and this is a garlic variety as well. And then I have lots of spices in here, which spices make everything better. There's a little bit of garlic powder, some smoked paprika, regular um, sweet paprika, there's some chili powder, a little bit uh, of chipotle. chipotle for a little kick. And if you are in Enika's boat and you are a little bit of a spice wuss, then you can sp you can <laughs> skip that part. But I don't think this but is this, too hot for no. you. So the portion that's listed in the recipe is not too spicy. So I think anyone could tolerate it if it passes my approval. So <laughs> we'll see if it passes her approval later. <laughs> I think so. And so then we just want to add more if you like heat. Yeah, I, I like a little heat. My husband is total opposite. So um, I would add my heat at the end, like after like to dip something in so that he's not suffering too much. Um, and then we're gonna put in, I put in some green onion. There's some frozen spinach. You wanna squeeze the liquid out of that. And then a little bit of green chopped onion. I'm gonna add in that salsa. We use the exact same salsa for both recipes. And if you're at home doing this, you know, get your hands in it. I don't know. These are your best kitchen tool, is your hands. And if you can get your hands on some gloves, then you can keep those in the kitchen with you. Then that way, if you wanna get messy and kinda of get fun with it, you can do this at home and get your hands in it and mix this all together. So Elena, for this recipe, would you also massage the kale first? Um, if you were using fresh kale, um, you could definitely do that and that'll help it kind of mm. sit better in your egg roll as you as you watch me wrap this you'll kind of see what I'm talking about. Um, but I'm just using a frozen spinach. Now you can definitely find frozen kale mm -hmm. in um, I think Rose Hours carries it in the huckleberry section. But yeah, whatever greens you want to use in here, really. I mean, the name of the game these days is use what you got at home. Yeah. Nice. So if you don't have to go to the store, and you don't want to, you know, deal with all of that drama, then you can just stay at home and figure out whatever greens you have, add them in. Now you most certainly can leave the greens out, but since this is a heart healthy item, we definitely want to try to keep those in as possible. So this is all, can you hear that? It's like squishy. Squishy. Squishy, yummy goodness. <laughs> Moisture. And I would say probably with ever, whatever green that you do is just making sure you do get rid of the extra moisture. Yeah, yeah, definitely um, squeezing it. Or out. else you're gonna have soggy egg rolls, which we don't yeah. want. Uh, I was gonna ask if you wanted a high five, but let me know. They're gonna go for it. Yeah. They're going for it. <laughs> I wouldn't do that to you, friend. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna take these dirty things off. Look, look mess, oh. it's contained. Isn't that perfect? <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna switch and put on some clean gloves. I'm gonna show you how to roll these. And we're gonna cook these in an air fryer. So if you don't have an air fryer at home, do not worry. You can either go buy one, because some of you might be like, ooh, this is awesome. Um, or you can do this in the oven. 
So we're going to use the air fryer back here and I'm gonna show you how to use this in a minute. But the key to making these egg rolls is to not overcrowd them. You don't wanna to put too much filling in here where you can't roll it. So I'm going to do a nice little pile. I'd say this is close to about a half of a cup. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna make a nice little pile in there like this. It just smells so good. Okay, and then I'm going to take the bottom like this. I'm going to fold up my sides. And these have been sitting out for a little bit, so you wanna make sure that they're fresh. And I've added a little bit of water and you're just going to roll it until that water touches. All right, I'm gonna show you one more. Actually, could you give me a fresh one out of there? Yeah. This one got a little dry. Got a little dry, it looks like. Yeah, I think it's hanging out on my cutting board too long. I was too excited to eat them. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Perfect, thank you. All right, so I'm gonna wet the corner again. Just get that nice and wet so it sticks. Again, about a half a cup of the filling. And Enika is going to help me make some of these because this yep. is our lunch today. Yeah. So I got a good amount of greens in there. So if you have any questions while you're watching, please feel free to uh, put them in the comments and we'll do our best to answer them now or, or later. And also, if, if you're having any kind of connection problem, uh, don't worry. We will go ahead and download this video and then upload it to the Memorial Foundation's YouTube page after. Um, and we'll be able to share that link with anybody who's interested. So the video will be available after we're done today. Here we go. Yeah. Another reason why I wanted to incorporate this recipe in it is it's a great example, especially if you're used to fried foods, crispy foods, um, not just to like to promote a specific product, um, but this is a great way to make get that crispiness <laughs> for a lot healthier. We aren't frying it, and what you will find is it actually does have a wonderful crunch. Mm -hmm. So this can be a really great recipe to help transition someone off of fried foods. Oh yeah, so definitely. And if you have an air fryer at home and you're a little intimidated by it, hopefully this will help you get that thing out. I know my husband got me one years ago and it seriously sat in my pantry for like a year and he's like you're gonna use that thing for more than just frozen french fries and I was like yeah <laughs> and so I have lots of recipes so if you're ever curious of how to how to get more of those air fryer recipes you can text me or email me or we might have to do our air fryer instant pot class because <laughs> instant pot is the other one that everyone's scared of we could teach you how to use it we won't blow up your house or anything so we might just have to do something like that. I love that health tip series on kitchen equipment. Yes. <laughs> how, how to use to, it. Yeah, how, not to use, how to use it and how not to burn your house down. Yeah. <laughs> and it's kind of like that same concept. You buy a treadmill and it becomes a laundry. No, right. So, <laughs> where you dry your stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's where you dry everything. Well, that's, that's what we're going to help so that you won't have that with these items either. Perfect. Yeah. Yay, those look great. So I just sprayed this with a little bit of cooking spray. In an air fryer, you really don't want to use a lot of oil. Otherwise, it'll spit and spatter. And the um, coil, heat coil that's right above it will start to smoke a little bit. So a little bit of cooking spray, just enough to get them crispy. So I'm going to set my air fryer to... 380 degrees for about 10 minutes and then at five minutes and if you want to oh yeah um so i'm going to just push this in and then i'm going to hit my power button adjust my temperature to 380 and then we'll go back down to 10 minutes and then you're going to hit the start this is a go wise brand this is a great one to start off with and about five minutes in, I'm going to flip them over just to make sure they get nice and crunchy on both sides of the egg roll. And then that's it. So super simple, super easy. If you are gluten-free, because these are not gluten-free, um, I am gluten-free, but I tend to cheat a little bit on that. Um, these don't seem to bother my stomach as much. So I think these are a good option if you're you know, not big on eating a lot of bread or pasta or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But you could also put this into a lettuce wrap mm -hmm. and do like a little um, lettuce wrap with it. You could even, if you've ever worked with collard greens before, or even any other large leafy green where you can steam the leaf and then mm -hmm. fill them with this mixture and kind of make your own like greens, mm -hmm. egg roll kind of mixture or kind yeah. of recipe. That would be really fun. 
Um, but I'm gonna have Enika keep making some of these yeah. because I have a feeling yeah. that we all want to take some home <laughs> and eat these very soon. Are they gonna make it home? Okay, they might make not make it home, <laughs> but we all want to have some. <laughs> so, and while she's doing that, I am going to switch gears here and talk about the um, toasted coconut chocolate chip cookies. And um, Inika wanted something chocolate for this, and yes. I totally agree because Valentine's Day is coming up yeah. on Sunday, and we all kind of want something sweet, you yes. know? And I think that most of us, we want uh, healthier options for especially cookies, and this is a healthier take on the chocolate chip cookie. Does it still have fat in it? Yes. Does it still have chocolate? Well, yeah. Oh, I mean, it has to have chocolate. It has to have chocolate. But it also does uh, switch out to a healthier sugar. Now, mm -hmm. sugar is sugar, right? I mean, yep. sweet is sweet. It's still going to um, influence your blood glucose, but um, it's the coconut sugar. And coconut sugar, to me, is not as sweet as regular white sugar. Um, so these are my toasted coconut chocolate chip cookies. And did you have something you wanted yeah. to add to that? And I like something, Alina does a great job at making it still taste sweet without using an excessive amount of sugar. And so one of the visuals that I have, um, so the American Heart Association has had tips on, or recommendations I should say, on how much added sugar to have less than, I should say, in a day. This is six teaspoons. So they say no more than six teaspoons or 24 grams of added sugar per day for women. No more than nine teaspoons or 36 grams of added sugar per day for men. And so if we were to start looking at labels, we will find that added sugar is in everything. One can of regular soda has 45 grams of added sugar. And this was only 22. So. This is, it really adds up quickly. So again, I think that's with Elena, it's like, okay, it's still sweet. We're using a little healthier sugar form, but also less, but it still tastes like a dessert. We already tested it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, had to. <laughs> and then the other part too, is we incorporated some healthy fats in here. I'm gonna reach over to our flax. Mm -hmm. Elena's gonna talk about how she's gonna use this flax as um, an egg substitute, but this is also a great way of adding a little more nutrition bang for your buck in a way. Um, so ground flaxseed has some of our omega-3 fatty acids in it, which is the type of fat that we also find in our nuts and seeds. We have it in chia seeds, hemp seeds that we do want to incorporate in. Ground flax also uh, is a good source of fiber as well. And so this is a great way of like, we actually are putting this in a cookie. So it's like, oh, we can justify it, <laughs> right? And then chocolate, if we did ch dark chocolate chips, there's antioxidants in there and everything else. And so, I mean, a dietitian can justify whatever they want, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna show, let Elena show um, what she did for this recipe. And she has the dough already. And so these were super easy to put together. And I went ahead and put together my dough so you could see the final product. But I used an Earth Balance buttery stick, and you can find that at most grocery stores in the um, deli case or the cold storage case, typically in the natural food section if they have one. There's also some coconut sugar, and if you haven't worked with this before, um, you're gonna find a, ba a big bag like this on Amazon, but most uh, grocery stores these days do have coconut sugar available. The best deal though is either on Amazon or Thrive Market if you're wanting to use this a little bit more than white sugar. So there's three fourths of a cup and I just creamed those together just with a hand mixer. And then I added my flax egg. So you can either do an egg or do the flax egg. Honestly, I've done them now both and they work pretty much the same. Um, the flax egg was just one tablespoon of the ground flax. You wanna make sure you use ground flax and um, two tablespoons of water. Just set it on the counter, let it kind of sop up the water. It'll start to get thick. And then you'll add that with your vanilla. And then really once that's well combined with your mixer, you're just gonna add everything else, your almond flour, your baking soda, the salt. And then I used a little bit of a gluten-free flour. If you don't wanna use a gluten-free flour, you can definitely use like an all-purpose regular flour. But a majority of what's in here is almond flour. And you can find almond flour, really the best deal is at Costco, shocker, right? Um, but I got this big bag for like $14, I think, at Costco. Okay. And these are great. Um, it's another great way of adding some healthy fats into your cookies. 
So really our cookies are pretty healthy. Yeah. The other thing that I like to do if you aren't using a gluten-free flour is I'm a big fan of whole wheat pastry flour. Mm -hmm. It's whole wheat pastry flour is made out of instead of like a really hard red winter wheat. Um, it's a different type of wheat, so it's not as um, fibery. <laughs> it's also more finely ground, um, but it's a great substitute for cookies, muffins, baked breads. It's a little bit milder than your than just a traditional whole wheat flour. Um, my Favorite brand is Bob's Red Mill. You can do other brands as well, but that can be a substitute if you aren't doing gluten-free. So yes, we can make them healthier, absolutely. So my egg rolls um, were getting nice and crispy, so I just went ahead and flipped them over. They only need about four more minutes and then they're ready to go. So I'm gonna put these back in. So we have a couple of comments here. Uh, looks delicious. Brenda, I can attest that it also smells delicious <laughs> from behind the camera here. It's a benefit of being the camera person. Um, and, and to the kale salad, love kale, but seem to run out of ideas. Mm -hmm. And I think, yeah, mm -hmm. that's a great point. And something point. with this kale salad too that I've done before is I have heated it up and put it as a burrito filling. Oh yeah. Um, really good. And so whether you want to just leave it exactly as it is, or you want to add even some brown rice or something to that, but yeah, mm -hmm. I've made it into a burrito mm -hmm. filling. And enchilada filling. Enchilada filling. Mm -hmm. But really you could put any, anything. Any, anything. Yeah, tacos, enchiladas, quesadillas, Ooh. sweet potatoes. Quesadillas. You can stuff it. Stuff it. it. We'll come oh. up with more. I, I'm <laughs> sure we'll have more ideas. So basically one salad and like seven days of the week different. Yeah. That's our next challenge. Yeah. <laughs> we can do it. We can, we do, can it. do it. Uh, <laughs> so once I mix everything together, I then added my chocolate chips and my toasted coconut. This is an unsweetened, um, fine shredded coconut. You can use the bigger flakes if you want, but I'd really recommend getting those ground down a little bit finer. You can pop that in your food processor or um, Vitamix if you have one and then just toasted it in the oven. I had this leftover from a few days ago of making some homemade donuts at home. So a little Thanks. bit of, yeah, I know, <laughs> baked donuts, donuts at home. See? Um, and this just adds that nice kind of warm toasty flavor to it. I'm using a smaller cookie scoop and you do want to let this kind of chill for a little while. So make sure that you put this in your fridge for about 20 to 30 minutes just to kind of firm back up. And once you get these all on your cookie sheet, you're gonna bake them in a 350 degree oven for eight to 10 minutes. Um, from, from past experiences with these cookies, they tend to take a little bit on the higher side of that, so the 10 minutes. You do wanna make sure you're spacing them apart about one, one and a half to two inches, just because they will spread a little bit. But halfway through baking, and this will say it in the recipe, but you wanna take like a rubber spatula or something like that, pull them out and then just press them down because these tend to stay kind of like in this cute little mound look, which you can totally leave it like that. But if you like more of a flatter cookie, just kind of give them a little, just give them a little love in the oven, okay? Since it will be Sunday mm -hmm. and it'll be Valentine's Day. And then just stick them back in for the remainder of the time. And once you're done with all of that, these become these. The so, angels are singing. Uh, Beautiful. Yeah. They and turned what, out really, really pretty. And, and what I like about her using the toasted coconut is that's just another, ooh, the classic, oh, melting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Yum. There it is. <laughs> Yum. But using toasted coconut, that really helps with getting a lot more flavor out of coconut, so you don't have to use as much either, because coconut is primarily fat. And mm -hmm. so toasting it, it's just like, again, that flavor pops. And then like we even sprinkled a little bit on, so if you're plating this up or something, sprinkle a little on the top and that makes it really fun and uh, eye popping and appealing, so. Yeah. So I'm so. just gonna, I'm gonna keep making these because I have a feeling that we're all gonna want We're just gonna eat them all. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're gonna go for a run. I'm going to the pool. I'm gonna get on my bike. <laughs> <laughs> so. so eat sweets responsibly. <laughs> yes. About egg rolls, uh, Brenda asks, as we're finishing up our cookies, uh, Brenda asks, uh, what's the alternative for cooking them with, without an egg, without an air fryer? Mm. So a general rule of thumb with an air fryer, um, if you're converting an air fryer to a um, oven recipe, is you wanna keep the same temperature, but double the time. 
So if ours take about 10 minutes, yours are gonna take about 20 minutes, but you're gonna be right around that 380, 375 in your oven. Um, but just double your time. You'll still flip them halfway through. Um, but you know, 10 extra minutes and you'll be able to do a, a little bit more in the oven. But yeah, good question. Awesome. Let's take a look at ours. Ooh, look at that. Pretty. They're nice and crispy. Now what I do encourage you, you I know you're gonna just wanna like grab it and put it right in your mouth. Oh, they're gonna be hot. These are really nice and moist. And so they're much hotter than what you think. Yeah. So have a little patience. Let them cool down a little bit. They'll still be nice and crispy. Eat your kale salad. Yes, eat your kale salad. Maybe have a cookie. <laughs> You hear that? We can eat a cookie. She said it. Dessert <laughs> first. Okay, dessert first. But yes, maybe we'll plate this up. We'll, okay, we'll cut it in half for you. Oh, yes. Well, that, maybe I'll put it here then. We'll put it here so we oh, can yeah. cut them in half. Okay, pretty, pretty so. Pretty. Oh, I should have left. We're going to make a really pretty picture. We're going to, we'll get some more like little green onion cilantro out to, well, you know, I thought we to garnish. Could put a little bit of the salsa. In Ooh, here yes. for mm -hmm. our dipping sauce. Absolutely. So I'm gonna just get this. Cut in half. Beautiful. And there you have it. And they smell delicious. There's the inside of our egg rolls. You can plate them pretty. Now these are very hot, but I have gloves on, and I also touch a lot of hot things, so don't try that at home. <laughs> <laughs> you can cut it at an angle too if you want to get yeah. really fancy with it. Awesome. Get our salsa in there and kind of plate around it. I think all of these would be a delicious, fun recipe or menu for. It's like too bad it's a Super Bowl Valentine's last week. Day yeah, and, a, and a Super Bowl one too. Yeah, these smell so good. So, so there's our egg rolls, and there you have it. Oh. So delicious. What do you know? We're good timing again. Mm. We're just so, gonna take all the gold green. Ooh, you're gonna get that one. <laughs> <laughs> so I really hope that you enjoyed this class and these recipes. I really encourage you to make them. Continue asking questions. We'll reply to them. And our next class will be again. We're doing the second Friday every month, so it'll be March 12th from 12 to 12:30, and it's plants to personalize your plate. Mm which is because it's March is National Nutrition Month and that is their theme. And so basically what that's gonna look like is here we're talking about how to incorporate plants, but also we understand that everyone has different health conditions, also different taste buds. And so what are some creative ways that we can incorporate plants in and you would be able to still enjoy that flavor yeah. and health. So that sounds so fun. Yes. Yes. Cookie! Oh yeah, wait, here. I oh, we gotta because, do the cookie! Because I'm the kind of generous person that I am, you know, we're gonna do Aww. <laughs> Jennifer, we will be posting the recipes. Uh, if you if you want to, right at this moment, Jennifer, you can go over to the event page, uh, which is Plans to Protect Your Heart, and see the recipes there. And as soon as we get off of this live, uh, I will po post them in the comments. And thank you so much. The Memorial Foundation is really uh, so happy to work with you, you both. What a fun day. Thanks everybody for joining us. Yep.